about to be 1 a.m. over here. And I am in a weird mood. Not weird as in bad, just weird as in kind of meh about things. So yeah, this video is going to be a bit more chill than usual, I, might, I think. I might be dead wrong and I might become crazy and weird eventually, but for now, I'm a curious little cracker. I decided to do some research on the Sprout family. And I came up with, and basically I did a while trying to look for them, but because it was a fairly, like, small town family in America and the UK, they weren't, like, that much information on them. Until I found one man. One Colonel Ebenezer Sprout. a whole damn page of information on him and his life. But yeah. I'd like to... Okay, firstly, a disclaimer. All the information I have on this guy comes from one Track Your Family page, a Track Your Ancestor page, and then backed up with Wikipedia. This guy could be some sort of homophobic Nazi for all I know. Well, he wasn't a Nazi because, like, 1700s. But he could be some sort of and I wouldn't know. This is all going off the information I found in him online. But yeah, from all the information, he seems like a decent guy. And he wasn't like a slaver as well, which is a great step for someone of that time period. But yeah, Colonel Ebenezer Sprout is an example of someone who could maybe not be a great person, but is a good person. I like that. So yeah, that let's learn about Colonel Ebenezer Sprout.
the winter and spring of 1777 and 1778. He was said to be the tallest man in his regiment. Ebenezer subsequently transferred to the 12th Massachusetts Regiment, where he served until September 1778, through year end. Ebenezer Sprout next joined the 2nd Massachusetts Regiment, where he's sorry, where he served from January 1781 until November 1783. During January 1781, he was executive officer under General Robert Howe, while a detachment of 500 men ordered out to suppress a mutiny of the 2nd New Jersey Regiment at Pompton, New Jersey. Three of the ringleaders of the mutiny were tried on the spot, with Lieutenant Colonel Sprout being pres president of the court martial. This was a sorrowful day for Colonel Sprout. Two of the men were sen sentenced and executed. He often said that that duty was the most painful ever imposed upon him. Ebenezer Sprout was promoted to Colonel. Fucking hell, a mess of spiders next to my face. <laughs> that fucking terrified me. Sorry, back to the story. <laughs> Shortly before the end of the war, he was brought into Colonel in 1783. An anecdotal... 1783, sorry. An anecdote illustrating Colonel Sprout's good nature with the enlisted ranks. Okay. Give me a second to pause the video and deal with the spider. It's terrifying me. <laughs> and I'm back. The spider has disappeared, and I have no idea where it is. I've decided that this is better this way. So yeah, back to the story. An anecdote illustrating Colonel Sprout's good nature with the enlisted ranks, concerns of furlough early in the war, when he was home visiting his mother. Three private soldiers asked for lunch at his parents' tavern, and when finished eating, asked him the price. He informed them that the cost was about a shilling for each man. To their surprise, instead of collecting the money from them, he paid each man a shilling and wished them a good journey. Colonel Sprout was also on good terms with officers such as General von Struben, Steuben, Steuben, I don't know, and he was a friend of George Washington. What a legend. Ebenezer Sprout became a shareholder of the Ohio Company of Associates and was engaged as a surveyor with the company. This is his, as, as, far as, my, as far as my research goes, this was his most questionable act because they took land of Native Americans. But yeah, <laughs> kind of gross, but I, he was a surveyor with the company. On April 7th, 1788, he and the group of American pioneers, led by Ruth, Rufus Putnam, same guys as Salem, <laughs> arrived at the confluence of the Ohio and Muskingum Rivers to establish Marietta, Ohio, as the first permanent settlement in the Northwest Territory. Ebenezer's wife, daughter, and Commodore Ripple joined him there the following year. I think his wife was Whipple. Sprout, with his tall and commanding presence, was a notable member of the pioneer settlement of Marietta. He greatly impressed the Native American population, who, in admiration, dubbed him Hetuk, Hetuk, I can't really speak that, meaning Eye of the Buck Deer or Big Buck Eye. Some historians believe this is how Ohio came to be known as the Buckeye State, though more commonly accepted as involves the later presidential campaign of William Henry Harrison, which is a story for another time. During the Northwest Indian War, that's the name of the war, he was authorized by Secretary of War Henry Knox to superintend the military affairs of the United States in Washington County. Again, morally questionable because the government's bad, Native Americans good, but men. He was a founding member of the Society of Cincinnati, also helped form the American Union Lodge No. 1 of Freemasons in Marietta, 
Travis Putnam, Benjamin Tupper, and William Stacy. Side note, this would mean my dad doesn't trust him. My dad does not trust the Masons. I don't really know much about them, but dad hates them. He's a conspiracy theorist. Also a flat earther and anti vax It's kind of gross. sheriff in the Northwest Territory, serving 14 years from 1788 to 1802 as Sheriff of Washington County, the oldest county in Ohio. At that time, the county encompassed lands from the Ohio River in the south to Lake Erie in the north, embracing half of the eventual state of Ohio. Sheriff Sprout was cheerful and fond of company, and quite attached to horses and dogs. As sheriff, rode a horse during long journeys through the county, accompanied by two or three large dogs. He filled the office of sheriff with dignity and exhibited a great kindness in his execution of the law. He was often known to furnish a poor family with his own money free them into a debt rather than arresting them. So basically that means that if he saw a family, if there was a family that was too poor to pay a debt, he would give them the money instead of arresting them, which again is a great Later years, latter years, he was fond of physical labor and of cultivating the land. He died in Marietta in early 1805, either on January 7th or perhaps during February, with his oft-repeated wish of a sudden exit fully answered, a legend. He is buried adjacent to his father-in-law, Commodore Whipple, and near many other American Revolutionary War soldiers. Cemetery in Marietta. Now, personally, I don't know why I decided to care so much about this one guy. I think it's very interesting that he just lived his life and tried to do this as best he could, and like, is dead, and is, as far as I know, largely forgotten, apart from this one article about him. But he genuinely seemed like a good guy. And I just think it's nice that, like, people throughout history just, like, casually vibe and doing their good deeds. I don't know. It's interesting. It's also really interesting. Like, he's not buried near my town because he's buried in, like, Washington County. But some relatives of his, who probably might have known him personally, are buried a few miles away from my town. I can't decide whether that is terrifying or interesting. Probably both. So I'm aware are Americans. I'm quite anti-American if you didn't know, but I decided to do something nice for you guys. So yeah, this is the story time of an American Revolutionary War hero. This has been a Shackety video. Hope you had fun. And please, go subscribe. I want to hit at least 100 subs before I go to uni in late September. So we've got two months, boys. We got this. Also, I say boys because I'm like a teenage LGBT kid. Boys means anyone. You're a boy if you're male, female, man, woman, or anything in between. We stand our non-binary gender fluid boys. Okay, that's all. See ya. Okay, today's mode is quite vibey and soul surgy. So your challenge is pretty easy. <laughs> Honestly, not much of a challenge at all. Your challenge is vibe check. Honestly, what's your vibe right now? That's your challenge. I want to know what your vibe is. Like, how you doing? How is life going? Like, what's the vibe, bro? Okay, yep, that's the challenge.